Hello, I am here to do my check-in for day eight of Chloe Ting's 2022 weight loss challenge. Um, just to kick it off, I did my waist measurement today and I was happy. It was down um, half an inch, so that's good. It's getting me uh, closer to where I want to go and um, just getting me uh, out of that, you know, risk zone for um, heart disease, diabetes, you know, the waist, uh, the waist measurement, that, that weight we carry around the middle, that's what makes us more susceptible uh, to these challenges, right, you know, uh, health-wise. And so it is something that I want to be mindful of. And uh, I feel really, I feel really good about that, you know. It's definitely a positive momentum. I see the changes in the rest of my body. I see the changes in my face, you know. Um, I've even like looked at the starting video um, and I feel there's been a lot of changes in my face, you know, my, my chin, you know, there's less there. <laughs> uh, and I'm just noticing better muscle tone. Um, and I just have better endurance and, and I'm feeling a lot better. My energy's better. I'm sleeping better. Um, yeah, there's just been a lot of improvements, a lot of things um, that have really benefited from me making this commitment to myself and to challenge myself. I'm, I'm still really enjoying the challenge piece. I think it's really good for me to do a little of that straightening by fire. Um, and to have somebody sort of like, you know, hold me accountable and say, you, you can, you can do more than you think you can, you know? And, um, just as I was starting to feel really confident in that, she like kicked the ever loving shit out of me today, <laughs> getting back after my, you know, day of active rest this week, got off with a bang, super intense. And I felt like I was back at that day one beginner level. Not quite, but, uh, you know, I actually surprised myself. I did pretty much everything high intensity um, on the hit. Uh, there was a lot I had to modify on the new strengthening uh, program she brought in this week. Just because it was like, I'm, I am not there yet. She does a lot of stuff that involves, um, you know, balancing, balancing while doing, you know, uh, vigorous movement and strengthening. <laughs> it's like, she's really forming new neural pathways, okay? But it's definitely more advanced stuff. And um, if I was, you know, some little slip of a thing, maybe it would be easier for me, but I'm not. You know, I'm a curvy broad and uh, I just got to be mindful of what my body type is and where I'm at right now. The fact that I am still carrying, you know, more weight on my body than I really need to have there. And uh, if I do some of those things, I'm going to hurt myself. I will. And I'm, I'm aware of that. So, but I still tried, you know, I just tried like, let's gauge. Where am I at? Oh, okay. I just fell on my ass. All right. So I'm definitely not there. It was really intense today, though. I mean, I just was like, oh, my God. I don't think I've ever sweat so much in a workout. <laughs> it was pretty funny, but I got it in, you know, and I didn't stop. You know, I kept going. But uh, the stuff that repeated from last week, oh, my gosh, I'm, you know, I'm doing high intensity with all of it. No, no, no longer, you know, breaks. No, no, none of that. Like, so that's awesome. I really just saw a huge uptick in my performance. Really, really stoked out about that. Um, but the new elements that got added, of course, they went up in intensity. Uh, the challenge increased and I expected that, you know, I expected she'd be working with that progressive resistance, you know, concept of, you know, continually upping the bar. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm in it, you know, I'm in it for the journey. I'm really excited to see how much things shift 
over a four week period. I'm really happy with uh, the progress I've had this first week. And I can't wait to see where I'm at like four weeks later. It's pretty impressive. Food feels pretty good. Um, you know, I'm just, just enjoying my, you know, usual relationship with food. I, I, I prefer nutritious food, so that's not an issue for me. Um, I have, you know, sort of like just been more mindful about certain things. I really love chips, you know, so I haven't had any chips since I started this. And honestly, I don't have a problem with sweets. Sugar used to be a big thing for me. You know, I've always been a sweet tooth ever since I was a little kid. And that's something that used to really, really uh, tempt me. But I don't get sugar cravings anymore because I do these smoothies, you know, and I use my chocolate protein powder and I put some banana in there. And, you know, just a little tip. If you're somebody who has really intense sugar cravings, I, I highly recommend, like, at the very least, just try having a banana instead. You'd be surprised, like, just getting that sweet taste. There's something about it. Bananas are actually beneficial for you, you know? Um, but even if you don't do a banana, try the, try the shakes, try the smoothies. Like they really work. And um, fruit's gotten such a bad rap, man. I don't get it. I don't get why people think that fruit's bad for you. Fruit is not bad for you. Actually, you know, just gonna throw down a little Ayurveda for you. Like fruit is so essential. For digestive health it has so many wonderful digestive enzymes it's high in antioxidants it's tasty ted loves bananas you know he always has bananas he always has some of the smoothie that i make um but yeah you got like all that potassium from the bananas it's it's so beneficial like we need these things you know they're good for us um and they're natural they're natural Ooh. sweet taste yes and they have fiber you know, um, so these are wonderful, natural, whole foods. It's one of the things that I can't stand the most about the whole like diet mentality thing is that, you know, foods that are just whole, nutritious, close to the earth foods have been demonized and it's so bizarro to me. It's really weird, you know. Uh, you can't tell me that, you know, there's anything wrong with having an apple or, you know, in enjoying a, a fruit smoothie that's, you know, made with all fruit, a little nut butter thrown in there, you know, but there's some people that would be just like, oh, it's just so high in sugar, you know? Come on, man. It's like, we've really gotten crazy about food, you know, with this whole diet culture stuff. And um, if you're listening to your body, Honestly, if you listen to your body and you you eat in the way that your body truly asks you to eat, which requires that you kind of make contact with your body and drop in, it's it's not hard. You just like put your hands on your tummy when you're hungry. You close your eyes and just ask your body, you know, what sounds good? What do you want? I guarantee you, your body's not going to like always be asking you for junk. Like your body wants nourishment. It does, you know. Um, and, and when you listen and you respond to that communication, you're not going to go wrong. You're not. And every body is different. Every body needs something different, right? Um, it's, it's interesting because my body naturally, without effort, just my hunger patterns, I fall into kind of a, uh, you know, intermittent fasting pattern. It's nothing that I try to do. It's just, my hunger kicks in later in the day. I've never been somebody who really enjoys um, breakfast, right? But I always ate it because I felt like, well, I'm supposed to eat breakfast, okay? I was going by something an external authority told me to do instead of listening to my body and what my body really wanted. And breakfast always made me feel a little queasy and a little like, ugh, I never really enjoyed it. Um, and I've always had kind of a bad habit of late night eating, okay? That's like my Achilles heel, late night eating. And it doesn't make my body feel good. It doesn't. Uh, anytime I've gotten into a pattern of late night eating in the past, it's always led to me like having heartburn or indigestion, feeling sick to my stomach. Like my body just doesn't do well with that. 
nobody's body really does. Um, and, and that's because, you know, at night, all of your digestive organs are going through their detoxification cycle. All of your organs are detoxifying. That's, that's what nighttime's for. It's for rest and replenishment, you know? Um, and if you're eating late at night, you're diverting all of that energy that's supposed to go towards, you know, the organs going through their detoxification process to digesting your food. So that's why you wake up. You feel sluggish. You feel kind of like icky. You feel like you got a food hangover. It's because you, you, you kind of do. You didn't get to detox. You didn't get good rest because of it either, you know? So um, I did have to kind of like initially work to shift that. I sort of merge my understanding of Ayurveda and intuitive eating together, right? So I, I, sh I shifted that, you know? And I started like edging back, you know, how late I would have dinner. And now I kind of just like, in general, I close the kitchen around eight o'clock. Occasionally, you know, I may close the kitchen at nine, just depending on how busy the day is, but I don't do that late night eating anymore. And if I want something at night, you know, something to nourish me, um, I'll make myself some herbal tea, you know? If there's something about just like having a warm cup of something that, you know, feels very like nurturing. And I find I did fine with that. Um, I focus my attention on other things at night now to wind down, to relax, instead of munching, you know, mindlessly, I might uh, do some meditation, I might do some yoga, I like to, you know, tune into YouTube, and I like to watch ASMR, and I like to do guided meditations, you know, and, and listen to things that just relax me, you know, I tune into a lot of other tarot readers, and um, just enjoy receiving readings and appreciating, you know, what other people are putting out there. There's some really good content on YouTube, okay? Um, but yeah, you know, I, I, I've got out of that pattern, right? And so once I got out of that pattern, uh, just listening to my body, I really don't get hungry until the afternoon. It's just kind of the way I've always been. It was very interesting because before I started this Chloe Ting challenge, my body had fallen pretty naturally into like a 24 cycle uh, with the intermittent fasting, which is like a 20, a 20 hour fast, four hour eating window period. And people look at that and they go, well, that doesn't seem healthy. Like, how can you possibly eat enough food? Oh, believe me, you can eat plenty of food, nutritious food, have all of your nutritious needs, you know, met within a four hour eating window. And what I try to explain to people is most of the time that that fast is going on, you're sleeping, you know? It's at night, it, you, you're normally resting anyway. So it's not like you're like white knuckling it, okay? And then you wake up, you're not hungry. Um, if I'm not hungry when I wake up, then I'll have a bulletproof coffee, you know? I'll make myself a coffee, I'll put some healthy fat in there, you know, put some ghee in there, put some straight up, you know, coconut cream, whip it up in the blender and, uh, and drink that. And I feel fine. Like I'll get my workout in. And then usually by that time, it's later in the afternoon, by the time I'm done with my workout and, uh, I'll go ahead and, you know, I'll have my smoothie, you know, and that's when my fast breaks. So, you know, in a four hour, you know, window of eating, I would do that in like three courses. I'd have my smoothie, then I'd have my main dinner. Um, and sometimes I would have some kind of like little snack after dinner. If I had my dinner early, you know, if I had a dinner at like five or six, I'll have like some kind of snack after that. Or um, I'll have sometimes a, you know, a dessert, you know, a nutritious dessert. I'll make something, you know, that's sweet, but is, is also nourishing. Um, and, and that's that, you know, so easily, you know, I like to have, I like to have a nice, you know, big hearty meal. That's just me. So for me, I love it. It works great, you know, and I feel really good. And all my, all my, uh, you know, nutritional needs are being met and my body really responds well to it. It's improved a lot of things for me, actually, you know, um, and with the neurological, issue that I've been dealing with, I've also seen a lot of improvement with it through utilizing that method. It's 
really helped me have less episodes of these like flare ups. So it's been such a benefit for me personally. Um, and what was interesting though, is when I started doing the Chloe Ting, it shifted like this week when I woke up, I, I was, you know, getting hungry when I woke up. So I was like, Oh, okay. I'm going to need to eat. And so, uh, I took care of, you know, my little morning stuff, my little morning routine. And I ended up having, you know, my first meal earlier today. So today I had a 16, eight, you know, it wasn't 24 like it's been. And I kind of anticipated that. I thought, you know, I'm going to be building muscle. Um, my, my muscle's going to need more nourishment so it can, you know, repair. Because that's what happens when you work out. That's how your, your muscle grows. Like you get these little micro tears in the, in the muscle tissue, right? And then it's like uh, the repair, the rebuilding is what strengthens, okay? So it's really important to have, you know, good protein and, um, you know, all of those amino acids, the essential amino acids have good potassium, like all these things that you need for your, your body really to do that repair work so you can get strong and you see the benefit of that exercise that you're putting in. Um, so I anticipated that I might actually get hungrier and I did. And I had, uh, I still have, you know, the same amount of food I would normally have. It just, it got spread apart different today. So I always listen to my body. I let my body guide me. I eat when I'm hungry. I stop when I'm full, comfortably full. None of this just satiated bullshit, you know? I want to feel really satisfied after my meal. I don't want to eat fucking cardboard. I don't want to eat food that's like healthy but it's, na but it's nasty. I'm not going to eat kale chips. I'm not into that shit, okay? I want good, wholesome, nourishing, yummy, whole foods. And I love to cook. So, and I'm, I'm a good cook. And I can take, you know, all those like, all those different treats and those like, those favorites, you know, and I can rework them so they are healthy, but you won't miss any of the flavors. So I've worked on that a lot over the years. Um, and I feel really good about the food. I have a great relationship with food now. I don't, um, I don't have any kind of a strange dynamic around it like I used to. Like, um, honestly, just as somebody who uh, had a history of eating disorder in the past, it's like, food would be my constant thought, like what foods I need to avoid or, you know, oh, later I'm going to have this to eat because I'm fucking starving now and I only have so many calories to eat in a day, you know? So it's like, it used to be that like my constant thoughts revolved around food, the control of food, or um, conversely after, you know, a long time of restriction, what am I going to binge out on and planning that? It was just always just... It gets exhausting. You know, anybody who's struggled with uh, this kind of issue before knows exactly what I'm talking about. It gets so fucking exhausting. And it's sometimes with all the information coming at you, you start to feel like, I don't even know how to eat anymore. Like, what am I supposed to do? So coming to my body and intuitive eating and just trusting that, you know? Trusting the wisdom of my body. Like my biology knows what it needs. It does. It knows what it needs. And that's been proven actually in scientific study. I'm not going to get into that, you know, in this in depth, but um, it has been determined. There's been, you know, long term studies done on this. And if the body is allowed to kind of like dictate the eating pattern and the, um, the, you know, food preferences, instead of eating according to like some outside guidelines, the body actually does a superior job in ensuring that all of your nutritional needs are met. They did this long-term case study with toddlers, actually. It was really brilliant to control groups. So uh, you can look it up online, you know. Um, it is out there. You can find the information, but it's it was a study done in the 70s, I believe, um, with toddlers and allowing one group of toddlers to eat whatever they wanted, you know, indiscriminately at whatever time they wanted, on-demand feeding, basically. 
Um, and then the other group was put on a very regimented controlled diet where every nutrient was accounted for. And it went on for a while is quite a lengthy case study. And what they determined by the end of it was that the toddlers that were left to their own devices, they actually had superior nutritional absorption and they met their needs better. So it's pretty, it's pretty interesting. Um, I don't remember the name of the study. You'll have to kind of like do some research, but it is out there. They do mention the study in the intuitive eating book too by uh, Evelyn Triboli and Elise Rush. So you might be able to find the source in there as well. Okay. Um, but I've just really found that listening to my body has given me freedom, you know, and it's, it's really kind of cool to be at this place where I used to struggle so much with food and my relationship with my body, you know, just being really negative towards myself, being hard on myself, picking my body apart, squeezing at my body and, you know, um, judging my body and all this shit. And I'm like free of that. Like, I don't, I have none of that anymore. I really don't. I don't have any of that anymore. Um, and on the occasion that, you know, I do go out and like have a hot fudge sundae or something like that, it doesn't turn into like this like food fest. It's like, okay, that was great. I really enjoyed that. And then the next meal, you know, I listen to my body again, you know, what do you want now? But um, really I've come into this like beautiful natural balance with food. And I find that about 90% of the time, I really just want to eat new nutritious food. That's what I really enjoy. And that has everything to do with the fact that I listen to my body um, and my body responds to those foods with energy. Um, my, my digestion feels good. I sleep better. I feel like, you know, it improves my skin. I mean, I'm feeling really good about my skin. You know, I'm, I'm going to be turning 50 and, and I feel like, you know, my skin, my skin looks pretty good. I feel like I'm aging pretty well, you know, and uh, I just gua sha my face. <laughs> this is, that's what this red is right here. I gua sha my face. I do gua sha on my face every night. So that's part of my little, my little routine, um, for my skincare. But even with my skincare, it's like, so, so simple, so basic. I don't use any skincare products at all. I use olive oil. That's all I use on my face. Um, and anyway, you know, it's just like, I feel like those, those foods I take in and, um, how I'm moving my body now, all these pieces, the things I do for stress management, I feel like it's really paying off and I enjoy these things. It feels good. It feels supportive. And my whole goal with this is not to have this be something I go on and off of. It's something that I want to have as my lifestyle practice. So um, it's been very helpful for me to be challenged by Chloe Ting because I realized that in the past I wasn't, I wasn't challenging my edge enough with my exercise. And that's something that I really need at this age, you know. I am, you know, heading into that, you know, uh, age bracket where I need a little bit of a boost, you know, with the metabolism and, and it is important that I build muscle at this time and I do need that extra like push. So, um, would I have pushed myself that hard on my own? Honestly, no. <laughs> No, <laughs> I mean, there's really, there's times that I'm doing this and I'm just like, oh my God, I'm dying. This is really intense. I mean, there's times it gets a little dramatic. Okay. But I'm laughing too, because it's funny. Um, but yeah, to know that, to know that it's not challenging and yet I get to the point where, you know, by the end of the week, I'm like, okay, I, I, I kind of got that now. It's, it's not as challenging as it was before. I can actually do this and feel pretty confident in it. So it's a really cool experience. 
I'm actually, you know, the, the physical, like seeing the changes in my body, seeing things tone up, seeing my shape, you know, become more defined and emerge and all those things. Those are, those are lovely things. I'm not going to pretend that, you know, aesthetics aren't important to me at all. Of course, I want to look my best. I want to feel my hottest. Of course I do. Right. But honestly, for real, what I'm really digging more than anything is just how I'm feeling. And, and I'm, I'm liking what it's doing for my, um, like my personal mojo. Like I, I feel my confidence coming forward. I'm feeling stronger, like within myself as I'm able to like meet these challenges and then surprise myself and go, wow, I didn't know I'd actually be able to do that. How cool is that? So I'm loving this, you know, I'm loving this process. And even when it's challenging and even when I'm a puddle of sweat and I look a hot mess, and I'm laying there on my mat, like just a lump, panting. <laughs> I'm still loving it, you know? It's good stuff, it's good medicine, it's what I need right now. I definitely feel like I need to call my, my natural fire forward more, so this is a good match for me, and yeah. I'm ready to get it this week, on to week two. Day one of week two down, and um, I'll see you tomorrow with another check-in.